Watch this, the teenage boy says before jumping his skateboard up onto the stair railing. His friends watch in amazement as he deftly guides his board down the long rail. They hoot and holler in support until suddenly the boy seems to lose his balance. He falls from the rail and tumbles down the stairs of the large parking garage where they had been practicing their skateboarding tricks. The boy hits the ground at the end of the stairs, and all of his friends go quiet. The boy is stunned, but eventually he opens his eyes and stands up, but none of his friends can do anything except stare. Oh no, oh no, oh no, the boy says as he looks down at his arm, which is now bent at a 90 degree angle in a spot where no joint should exist. The children watching all begin to scream, and one, unsure of what else to do, turns and runs. What do I do? What do I do? The boy with the broken arm says to no one and everyone. Luckily, one of the group quickly collects herself and steps forward to take control of the situation. Come on, she says, we're getting you to the hospital. The girl puts her arm around him on his non-damaged side and helps him to the street, where they have a stroke of good luck. Parked just a block away is an ambulance. Hey, the girl cries out, waving towards the ambulance. The paramedics inside must have seen her, because the ambulance's lights immediately come on and it drives the short distance to them. The ambulance stops, and two paramedics quickly exit the vehicle. The paramedics don't even need to ask what happened. They can obviously see from the unnatural angle of the boy's arm that he needs immediate medical attention, and they quickly place him into the back of the ambulance. The girl begins to pull herself into the back as well, but is quite forcefully shoved back into the street. Patience only is the sole response from the paramedic who pushed her before he slams the door shut. The girl gets a brief look at her friend's frightened face through the back window as the ambulance speeds away. Several days later, the children are sitting outside of the same parking structure, but none of them are in any mood to skate. All they can think about is their missing friend. Neither the boy's parents nor the police have any idea what happened to him or where he went. There's no records at any of the local hospitals of him ever being brought there, nor does there seem to be any evidence of this particular ambulance having existed at all. No one even seems to believe the children that he got into an ambulance. The whole story just seems too far-fetched and outlandish but the children know what they saw. As they discuss the events for the hundredth or perhaps thousandth time, one of the smallest of the group suddenly stands up and points. There it is! The rest of the group looks in the direction he's motioning and sees the same thing. It's the ambulance. None of them know what to do as the vehicle flies past them, this time with no lights on, and comes to a stop a block away from where they first spotted it. They watch as the two paramedics exit the vehicle and go around to the back. It's hard to see from this distance, but it looks as though they took something out of the rear of the ambulance, something that requires both of them to lift, before dropping it on the sidewalk behind some trash cans. The children watch as the paramedics get back into the ambulance and drive away, disappearing just as quickly as they appeared. After a moment of shock, they all in unison begin running to the place where the ambulance stopped. They come to a skidding halt just in front of the trash cans. None of them can do anything except stare until they all break out into screams, one of the children turning and immediately running away. And they have good reason to scream, because in front of them is their friend. His arm is no longer broken, appearing to have been somehow repaired in just a matter of days, but it is also no longer attached to his shoulder. The boy opens his eyes as his friends scream, and looks down to see that his arms and legs have been reattached at a new angle, jutting out from his back, leaving him standing on all fours, his face staring up at the sky like some kind of twisted animal. What happened to this young man was tragic, but he wasn't the first victim of this strange malicious anomaly, and unfortunately, neither would he be the last, because this was SCP-4419, also known as the Butcher's Chariot. SCP-4419 appears to be a seemingly normal vehicle which resembles a standard ambulance, though the exact make and model varies between manifestations. This anomalous ambulance will appear spontaneously in locations where a medical emergency of some kind is about to take place. Just how SCP-4419 is able to predict where and when these events will take place is unknown, nor is it understood how it always takes the form of an ambulance that resembles one appropriate to the local area. Once the medical event has occurred, whether that be a minor injury like a sprain or something more serious, such as a gunshot wound, SCP-4419 will quickly approach the injured individual. Two individuals which have a humanoid appearance and are dressed in paramedic uniforms that are, just like the ambulance, always appropriate to the location, will exit the ambulance. They will then secure the victim, using a stretcher if need be, and place them in the back of the ambulance. While the individuals who emerge from SCP-4419 will, for the most part, 
act as though they are normal medical professionals, they will strongly resist any attempt to either impede them in their quest to secure the injured person, as well as prevent anyone else except for their target from getting into the back of the SCP-4419 ambulance, up to and including the use of extreme physical force. As soon as the paramedic-appearing individuals have managed to secure the victim in the back of the ambulance, it will then quickly leave the area at a high rate of speed, and research has shown that as soon as it is out of observation, SCP-4419 will demanifest along with whoever is inside. But this isn't the end of what this anomaly has in store for its victim. Between two and seven days later, the SCP-4419 ambulance will suddenly reappear at the same area where it picked up its victim. The same individuals will exit the ambulance and leave the victim somewhere nearby before getting back in the vehicle and leaving the scene once again. The victim who is left behind will always have suffered what can only be described as invasive bodily modifications. Their injuries are so extreme that in most cases they should have resulted in the death of the victim, and yet they will always somehow still be alive. While the exact form of modification will vary from victim to victim, there does appear to be some correlation between the original medical emergency and the resulting procedure. And the SCP Foundation has documented a number of encounters with SCP-4419 stretching all the way back to the early 1980s. Some notable examples include one from 1983, in which a pedestrian who was crossing the street was struck by an automobile, resulting in them breaking their leg. SCP-4419 was on site and quickly helped the man into the back of the ambulance. When he was returned several days later, all of his limbs had been reattached in such a way that they were protruding from the front of his torso. In another event which occurred in 1994, a man suffered a broken jaw in a fight outside of a bar. To no surprise, SCP-4419 was on hand and took the man away for treatment. When he was next seen, his jaw had been permanently forced open and a glass window had been installed in the back of his throat which permitted direct viewing of his heart which had also been moved to the back of the throat. Unfortunately, there was no way to reverse this procedure, and the man had to be euthanized. In 2003, a husband and wife were in a car accident where they each sustained multiple broken bones. When SCP-4419 dropped them back off, the two had been fused together at the back, and any bones that were broken in the crash had been removed completely. When an elderly gentleman had a heart attack in 2006, he was picked up by SCP-4419 and returned with 11 new, non-functioning hearts grafted inside of his body. Attempts were made to remove these additional hearts through surgery, but unfortunately, the man did not survive the procedure. In 2008, a structure fire resulted in 19 people suffering extreme burns. Seven more injuries came when a crowd attempted to stop the SCP-4419 paramedics from placing all of the victims in the back of the ambulance, but they were unsuccessful in preventing them from leaving the scene with them. When the group of victims was finally returned, it was as a single organism, a large solitary mass which twitches and shivers when physical contact is applied. No method for euthanizing this organism has been able to be found, and currently they are stored inside of a tank at Site-31. In perhaps the strangest sighting of SCP-4419, a US private was wounded while on patrol in Afghanistan, and a military medical evacuation vehicle arrived to evacuate him. Suspicious about the vehicle's sudden appearance and the forceful conduct of the medical staff, the private's fellow soldiers ended up opening fire on the vehicle. They reported seeing a viscous black fluid leaking from the vehicle's surface, but they were unable to stop it from taking the injured private. In a deviation from its normal behavior, the victim was not returned to the same place, and instead appeared in the barracks the next day. The victim had been broken down into a thin paste and was spread across the walls. Agents were dispatched to secure what was left of the man, and they reported finding a still intact eyeball that dilated when they approached. The collected viscera has been labeled as remains and placed in storage, but it is currently unknown whether or not the victim has truly expired. Due to the danger SCP-4419 presents to anyone who suffers an injury, as well as its ability to appear virtually anywhere on the planet, it has been classified as Keter. Containment efforts at this point are largely focused on maintaining information control and post-manifestation cleanup, as opposed to any attempts at physical confinement. Anyone who witnesses an SCP-4419 manifestation is to be administered amnestics, and victims are to be treated in order to restore them to their original physical state as much as possible, or euthanized when no viable medical treatments are available, with a cover story constructed in order to explain their death. SCP-4419 is one of the most cruel and sadistic anomalies in the SCP Foundation's database, ranking right up there with SCP-106, The Old Man. 
Hopefully one day we will find a means to contain this brutal so-called medical vehicle, but until then, be careful if you suffer an injury and an ambulance is suddenly on hand, you might come back changed in ways you never thought possible. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-4666, the Yule Man, for another anomaly that seems to delight in the suffering of others. And make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a single anomaly as we delve further and further into the SCP Foundation's classified archives.